When South Carolina's first fall camp scrimmage concludes this upcoming weekend, there needs to be one message that we hear coming out of the program. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I am Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and you can find my written work over on Gamecocks Digest on SI.com. Thank y'all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team every day. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. South Carolina's first scrimmage is set to take place on Saturday afternoon, and while yes, we don't want to hear about any injuries for sure, there's one specific message that we do need to hear either coming out of the program or from Shane Beamer himself when he speaks to the media after the scrimmage takes place. Also, A couple of players spoke to the media on Thursday, and there were some intriguing comments that came out from some of those pressers. One that showed that one particular position coach is getting some buy-in from his position group. And another comment, or series of comments, regarding the return of one specific player in the Gamecocks defensive front. We're going to dive into all of that on this Friday edition of Locked On Gamecocks. There is one thing that we need to hear about South Carolina's first scrimmage on Saturday afternoon. And that one thing is this. We need to hear that the Gamecocks rush offense went toe-to-toe with South Carolina's rush defense. Why do we need to hear this? Well, the reasoning is pretty simple. We need something out of individual video clips and some glimpses from fall camp practices to show us that the running game has improved since spring practice took place. If we all recall, Dow Loggins, he talked back in early April about how South Carolina's ground game had taken a pretty big step back in the second spring practice scrimmage that the team held during that portion of the offseason. And he hinted when he talked about this that the offensive line did not open up enough holes. And while things were set up differently in the spring game, such as differing lineups along the offensive line, things didn't change very much when it came to South Carolina's rushing attack against the Gamecocks defense. And that was important to note back then because when it comes to spring practice or fall camp as well, Typically, the defense does start out with the upper hand, and gradually, over time, the offense is supposed to do better as things progress, because more install of the offensive playbook has taken place, and the quarterback and skill positions and also the offensive line, they've just all had a lot more time to gel together, to get into a much better rhythm, whether it's going into the spring game or going into their actual football season for that fall. This offense has now had that time. They got time beyond spring practice. They had their player run practices during the summer to be able to figure out how to operate without left tackle Jalen Nichols. And Spencer Rattler has had more time to get acclimated with some of maybe his new skill position teammates, such as Nicholas Harper. This offense also now seemingly has a lead back in that running back room into carry on Joyner who has now completely transitioned over to the running back position, and he also added 13 pounds of muscle this summer and is now listed at 229 pounds. So to carry on Joyner, he's clearly put in the work, and for those of us that watched the spring game, we saw some really good flashes from to carry on Joyner, despite the fact that, again, he had only been working partly with the running back position group for three or four weeks before that spring game, or spring scrimmage, basically took place. If we hear, after this scrimmage on Saturday, that this rushing attack at least matched up evenly with what I'm starting to believe is going to be an improved Gamecocks defense, then I think that that is a very good sign, that progress has been made on that front. 
We've talked about how important it is for South Carolina to obviously improve in both rush defense and rush offense. But the thing about the Gamecocks rush offense is if South Carolina can have even just a semblance of a ground attack, maybe just an average ground attack to help out Spencer Rattler, then this offense, it could be really, really difficult for opponents to deal with in 2023. If reports come out once again, however, that the defense basically annihilated the offense, if the offense maybe goes three and out on five of their first seven or eight possessions like they did in that second spring practice scrimmage all the way back in late March or early April, then I will really question how three more weeks of fall camp is going to help turn things around for this ground game on offense. Basically, I'm saying that if we do not hear about improvement after this scrimmage, with all the extra time this offense has now had, the O-line and this running back room, I don't think we're going to see very much of a ground game to speak of in 2023. I just don't think we will. And who knows? Shane Beamer, he could kind of just decide to avoid this topic after the scrimmage takes place. He is scheduled to talk to the media after this Saturday scrimmage. I may or may not be in attendance, but I am going to be the best man in one of my best friend's weddings on Saturday. And so um, probably going to be a stretch for me to make it there. But either way, I'm hoping to hear that Shane Beamer says something to the effect of the run game and rush defense for South Carolina went toe-to-toe with each other. We all need to hope that we hear that coming from his mouth on Saturday, or maybe Dow Loggins when he speaks to the media this next time on August the 23rd, albeit that's going to be a good ways away from now. So, again, South Carolina's rushing attack, we have to hear good things about it coming out of Saturday. If we don't, then at this point, I just don't know what else we can expect from that facet of the offense this upcoming fall. Now, while there's a lot riding on this upcoming scrimmage, potentially regarding the feelings around the Gamecocks rushing attack, one area or one position group that we all feel pretty good about heading into this season is this interior defensive line, the defensive tackle position. Javarian Robertson has come in, and it seems like that There's been a sort of attitude adjustment or maybe just a change in the urgency of that group. And that sentiment was echoed by one of the veteran players of that group when he spoke to the media on Thursday morning. We're going to dive into what all was said and what all it means for Trevorian Robertson and this position group in just a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Having a respectable running game could be key for South Carolina if they want to maybe go on a dark horse SEC championship run because everything has to work and fit perfectly in an offensive scheme, just like every part of your vehicle. So the next time you need parts and accessories for your car, head on over to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can make sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that the part will fit or you'll get your money back. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, that's a lot of parts right there, you'll be back in the game in no time. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. Welcome back to this Friday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day in just 30 minutes. And speaking of every single day, as always, thank you to each and every one of you everydayers for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecocks sports coverage. Based on some of the comments that were made by one of South Carolina's very defensive tackles on Thursday morning, Travion Robertson is already receiving some buy-in from his position group. Alex Boogie Huntley, the four-year veteran from the state of South Carolina, he talked with some of the local media on Thursday morning sort of about 
the sense of urgency that he might have heading into this season. He wasn't asked anything specifically about Javarian Robertson, but he said something really interesting that I want to see if you all are going to pick up on in this clip and soundbite that I'm going to play. Here's what Alex Bookie Huntley had to say about this sense of urgency. What's this sense of urgency like for you going into year, what, three or four now for you with the chance to potentially start? What's that sense of urgency like and how's camp gone so far? Yeah, I mean, everything uh, Everything has a purpose. And I think the whole D-line, whole defense, whole team is trying to show that with every indie, every period, every one-on-one, whatever it is, you know, do it with 100% because how you practice is how you're going to play. So you want to play your best, you got to practice your best. The one thing that stuck out to me out of that entire exchange between Alex Bookie Huntley and that reporter was when Alex said, how you practice is how you play. We have heard that same statement before from none other than defensive tackles coach Travian Robertson. He said this at his introductory press conference back in early May. Here's the clip and soundbite of Travian saying that exact phrase. Me coaching um, is just the same as me playing. I'm just not playing no more. My, my mentality is still dominate mentality coaching. I coach hard. I demand um, excellence in practice, you know. You're going you're gonna to play how you practice. And um, we practice hard every day out here on that field. And so I, I, I don't expect nothing less than that. So the next question that we need to ask ourselves with this entire conversation is, why is Boogie Huntley repeating this phrase a big deal here? Well, in my opinion, this is a big deal because this indicates that Alex is fully bought in when it comes to the messaging and the coaching of Travian Robertson. This is an even bigger deal when you consider the fact that Huntley is one of the veterans of this entire position group, heading into his fourth year in this program. And sometimes when there's a new head coach or when there's a new position coach that comes into the picture, the group of players that could be the hardest to win over on your team are the older guys. Young guys are impressionable. Those guys, they don't have as much experience. They haven't been around the block as many times as some of the older guys have been in a program. And they might not have built that strong of a relationship between themselves and maybe the last coach that they had, either their position group or maybe the head coach that led the entire program. So for Robertson to have instilled belief And garnered trust from Boogie Huntley is huge for him, in my opinion, because Huntley can now serve almost as a coach-player liaison, in a sense. Think of a leadership council that every football team has where they have certain players all talk to the head coach, but on more of a macro scale, where you've got maybe one player at a position group talking to the position coach. Alex can help Travian Robertson on the field in practice by motivating guys and also bringing along some of the guys that maybe are younger and trying to get adapted to the college game or guys maybe that are struggling with some of the things that they are trying to learn from Coach Robertson. And he could also be someone that comes up to Travian if any issues potentially pop up within the position group itself, whether it's maybe some disagreements about how maybe something's being done or maybe some guys Multiple guys are just confused about what he wants them to do with a certain technique or maybe a certain call sign. And he comes up to him and says, hey, we can we go over that maybe a little bit more in this next practice? Maybe we spend a little bit more time on that. That kind of relationship is so important for a coach that is in Travion Robertson's shoes coming back to a program like South Carolina's. And the thing that impresses me the most out of this entire situation is the fact that this is truthfully the first time since Travian's come back to Columbia that he's actually been able to go out onto the field for an extensive period of time and coach up these guys. We got to remember, Coach Robertson was not here for spring practice. He was hired by Shane Beamer after spring practice concluded for South Carolina. And so he didn't get four to five weeks to be able to really integrate himself into the program and build a relationship with those players while they basically were living and breathing football throughout that stretch of time. And while he might have been able to give some 
coaching instruction this summer, we all know that there's still a lot of restrictions on these coaching staffs when it comes to how much time they can spend with the players essentially outside of their summer strength conditioning program that the strength coaches run. And so that is why, considering the fact that we are only a little over a week, or right at a week actually, into fall camp now, the fact that Alex Boogie Huntley is already beginning to emulate what Trayvon Robertson wants his players to be about on the football field, again, you can't quantify that. That is a big deal for Trayvon Robertson. Now, again, does this mean that his entire group is just going to be one of the best interior defensive line groups in all college football this season? I'm not saying that. But as I've said before, I really love the depth from this group. I really like the talent from this group. I love the athleticism. I love the varying skill sets. I really and truthfully don't think that this defensive tackles group has a weakness. When it comes to all the players that they've got and what all they offer on the football field. And that's something that's been frustrating for this fan base for the last couple of years. Even beyond Coach Jimmy Lindsey. By the way, Coach Jimmy Lindsey's doing better. He had a major health scare a couple days back at LSU. Hope things are going well with him. But it's kind of felt like for several years now that this is a group that's underperformed. Despite the fact that there's been some really talented guys still that have come up through this program at the defensive tackle spot. Trayvon Robertson, I think he could very well be the guy that gets this group to finally realize its full potential for the first time in several years. And the fact he's already getting buy-in from some of his veterans is huge in terms of trying to get this entire group to reach that full potential starting with the 2023 football season. Now, while Alex Boogie Huntley's comment about Travion Robertson or about sort of the mentality that's been instilled into that defensive tackle group, in my opinion, was very eye-opening. Another series of comments that were very eye-opening were the ones that were made about edge rusher Jordan Strun and how he has been coming off of that ACL rehab. Because Jordan Strun, according to some of his teammates and his own coach, Sterling Lucas, he's all the way back. And he might even be better than he was at this time this past year. Here's a quick compilation of clips and sound bites from Sterling Lucas, Tyreek Johnson, and George Stroud himself regarding where Stroud is at at this point in his comeback. To me, he looked great, man. He looks normal. He looks like he's 100%. You know, every day he comes out here and practice and grinds and stuff, and he's out there making plays. So in, from my eyes and my perspective, perspective, he looks great. He looks exactly how he looked when he first got here. He's continuing to get better. Uh, you know, the year he was off, he, he worked. He's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. And really, I think he looks better than what he did before he, before he uh, you know, he got injured on last year. So I'm really excited about where he is. Well, going through this before and being successful um, has actually sped up the process. So, like, I don't have to sit there and, like, too much dwell on the mental side when you've been through this before or been successful on the other side. So mentally, like, I'm back. Um, physically, I'm back. Um, I'm back, so. Y'all have heard me talk about before that when these guys have a major injury like this, like when George Stratton tears an ACL, it is a 50-50 coin flip in terms of how those guys respond to an injury like that. Half the guys or athletes that have that kind of injury, they come back and they're not necessarily all the way back. Great example is Marshawn Lloyd in 2021. I think everybody that watched him play that season knew deep down that Marshawn Lloyd did not really come all the way back until, say, possibly that Florida game late in the season. That was like the Gamecocks' ninth or 10th game in the 2021 season. That's how long it took for him to bounce back from a fall camp ACL tear the year prior. However, the other 50% of the athletes that have an injury like this, they bounce back and sometimes better than they were before. And based on these comments, it seems like the Jordan Strun is on the positive side of that spectrum there. And that is a huge deal. Not just for Jordan Strun and this entire position group, the defensive end position group, but also some of the guys surrounding the defensive line. 
So who are the players that are going to benefit the most from Jordan Strawn bouncing back this well from his ACL tear that he suffered this past season? Well, the first two players that come to mind are Jatia Skier and Desmond Omeo Zulu. Both of these guys are the second string and third string edge rushers behind Jordan Strawn right now based on what we've seen in fall camp practices. But both of these guys also have one main thing in common. Neither of them have ever played a snap in this conference. Now, Gear has starting Power 5 experience playing for Syracuse in the ACC this past fall. But we all know that the ACC is basically one level above Group of 5 play. It honestly and truthfully is. That that conference is very top-heavy. It's not very deep in terms of talent. So we do have to keep that in mind when we talk about Jatias Gear. That doesn't mean that he can't be a good player here. But for this first season, it's going to be a touch of a learning curve, I think, for him, at least at the beginning. Desmond Ozulu, obviously, he's a true freshman. And so he's also inherently going to have a learning curve. Both of those guys are still going to have to contribute. And they are certainly still going to have to help take some of the pressure subsequently off of Jordan Strahan so that he doesn't feel like that he's got to be out there almost for the entire football game every single week. Because I think at least at the beginning of the season, for sure, he's not going to be able to do something like that. But, again, that burden, that responsibility, it won't feel so overbearing for Gear and Emil Zulu. It's going to give him more time to get acclimated and get adjusted to this level of football. So I think that that is something that cannot be underestimated in this conversation. Now, the other players that are going to benefit from Jordan Strand's bounce back from this ACL tear are going to be the linebackers and defensive backs that will usually line up on his side of the field, especially when a run play occurs. Rush defense has obviously been a major point of emphasis for this entire side of the ball this offseason. And I say that because... One of the issues when it has come to rush defense for South Carolina since Shane Beamer's gotten here has been edge defenders holding contain on running plays. Whether that is on option plays, maybe zone reads, maybe just counters. Some of these edge defenders that South Carolina has had play a lot of snaps. They have not done well in that facet of the game. And when defensive ends or edge rushers make the wrong decision in rush defense, they take themselves completely out of the play more often than not. And when that happens, that subsequently puts a lot more pressure on the linebacker that's on that side of the formation and also the one or two defensive backs that you've got maybe close to the line of scrimmage on that side of the field. And that's not even accounting for the fact that those three defenders at max and two defenders at least, they likely have two or three blockers that they've got to deal with on said running play. And while Jordan Strahan has always been known for his pass rushing ability, and that's clearly his specialty, Strahan has also been a pretty good rush defender throughout his college career. In three seasons, where Strahan recorded at least 149 snaps in rush defense, he posted an average grade of 75.9 according to Pro Football Focus. That's a pretty good grade on Pro Football Focus's grading scale. And the other thing is, Jordan Strahan, he's going to have seven years of college football experience that he's going to be able to lean on when he comes back for this one last hurrah, this one final season that he's going to be playing here with South Carolina. So George Strun, him seemingly recovering quite well from that ACL tear is huge for this defense. But again, when we talk about that, for the most part, everybody's going to look at the edge rusher position, and how it's going to help out all these backups and some of the young guys that otherwise would have had to have been heavily leaned on if George Strun's recovery did not progress smoothly. But Jordan Strawn is also going to take some pressure off of this linebacker court. It helps out these linebackers and these defensive backs near the line of scrimmage when the edge rusher, at the least, forces the potential ball carrier to have to divert and go somewhere else. Maybe bounce it outside or try to take it inside in a hole that's not there. That's how important edge defenders and defensive ends are in rush defense. 
They can change the entire complexion of a running play when they perform their assignments well. George Stroud is a guy that I think can help out in that aspect, and I think he can bring more consistency in that aspect for this defense this year by just having him back in that lineup. So to hear his teammate Tyree Johnson say that he's looking really good, and Sterling Lucas even hint that he might be better than he was this past year, that's a great sign for this entire defense as a whole. With that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed today's show, as always. What's the one thing that you want to hear the most coming out of South Carolina's first fall camp scrimmage this weekend? How do you feel about the comments that were made by Alex Bookie Huntley? Do you think it's indicative of the buy-in that Travion Robertson is getting from his players? And also, what are your thoughts on some of the comments that have been made about Jordan Strun and just how much he has bounced back from that injury he suffered this past season. Let me know down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or shoot me a direct message on Twitter at a line underscore SC if you listened to today's show on an audio podcast app. Once again, thank y'all so much for tuning in to today's show. Have a great rest of your Friday and a fantastic weekend. And I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.